Hi, my name is Lance, and today I'm going to tie a Coronamid Frenchie. The Coronamid Frenchie is a Lance Egan pattern designed for still waters. Not only am I going to demonstrate tying the original Coronamid Frenchie, I am also going to demonstrate a couple variations. Eventually, I'll compare the variations of the Coronamid Frenchie to the original. The purpose of tying these flies with different materials is to give you the chance to see how these flies look using other materials other than the ones on the original. Maybe you already have some materials that could work for this fly and now you'll be able to see how they look without buying the excess materials. So without wasting any more time, let's go feed your rice. The hook I have on the vise is a Firehole 609 size 12 with a 764 inch nickel bead. It's a plumbing tungsten and I'm going to push that bead to the back of the hook and start my thread right behind the eye. Tag end. Then we're going to take some hairline sparkler merger yarn in clear white and we will tie that in. Pinch wrap right behind the eye. And then we'll cut the butt end. Take that yarn off. And we'll cut that yarn, the front of that yarn, to be right about where the eye, between the eye length and the bead length long. And then we'll whip finish. Cut the thread. And then we'll bring the bead to the front of the eye and restart the thread behind the bead. From here, we're going to take some Semperfly 0.1 millimeter silver wire. I think it's the equivalent of um, the ultra wire and small. And we'll go ahead and wrap that, tie it, start that behind the eye. Secure it down there. And we're going to take some muskrat gray pheasant tail fibers. About six or eight, five, six to eight fibers. I think that's about right, right there. Pull those from the stem. I'll trim the tips. I'll go ahead and tie those down behind the eye. Behind the bead, excuse me. Then we're going to take the wire and the pheasant tail and wrap them down the shank to the bend of the hook. Then we'll take the thread and bring it back up to behind the bead. Now we're going to take some super glue. Coat it on the fly, take our bodkin and spread it around. Give it some more durability and extra strength. And then we'll take and wrap, counter wrap these pheasant tails, tail fibers around the shank. And the reason we're counter wrapping the pheasant tails is because we're going to wrap the wire, the ribbing, the same direction we're doing the thread, and it will help when we're tying off that wire as we're helicoptering the, the tag end off it'll keep it tight against the shank and not tr not loosen as we pull it off. I could use the rotary function to do this but for this this fly I'm choosing not to. I'll use it for a different version, different color variation. Once I get to behind the, the bead I'll go ahead and tie that off Two wraps behind and one in front, and we'll take and we'll cut these tag ends. I'm putting the thread on my finger in between the pheasant tail and the thread so I don't cut my thread. Gives me a space there. And now I will we'll put a couple more wraps there, help secure it down better, and we'll go ahead and wrap this wire. And as you're wrapping this wire, it's very fine, so 
pull too hard it will break so be careful you gotta give it the right amount of tension and watch that hook point I'm trying to get seven to nine wraps in here evenly spaced wraps and once that's tied in there I'll go ahead and tie that off again two wraps in the behind it and one wrap between the uh, bead and the wire and then I'll helicopter that wire and as I was pulling it, it was tightening tightening those rib those ribbings instead of loosening them okay looks good now we'll take and grab some ice WV and shrimp pink just need a little bit and we'll wrap twist that around the thread that might even be too much looking at it we'll see in fact I know it's too much I'm gonna pull a little bit off take that and We'll go ahead and wrap that thorax. You only need a couple wraps. There we go. We got a little hot spot going there. And now we'll take and grab our whip finish. We'll go ahead and start applying our whip finish. We're going to take our Sally Hansen's hard as nails first. And with our bodkin, we're going to get her grab a, job, a drop off the brush. And we are going to apply it to the thread just below the fly. I don't know, half inch, three quarter inch. Something like that, just enough we can get a few wraps of thread with that on there. And then we're going to go ahead and apply a whip finish. So take it, we're going to apply a whip finish. Three. We'll do it again. Whoa. Whoa. Get you back in focus. Snip the thread, and there is the original Chronomid Frenchie. And for the next pattern we're going to tie, we're going to tie one with a different gill material and natural pheasant tails. So you can see how that looks. And for the next Chronomid Frenchie we're going to tie, we're going to tie one with natural pheasant tail rather than dyed pheasant tail, and we're going to use some something a little different for the gills. I don't like the way that hook's sitting there, so I'm going to readjust it. It's better. Slide the bead back again. And this is, again, this is a fire hole 609, size 12, with a 764 inch bead in nickel. And we'll go ahead and start the thread behind the eye. Trim the butt of the thread, the tag of thread. And for gills, for this version, we are going to use uni stretch. Just uh, comes on a spool. It's a little stretchy, and we'll go ahead and tie that in. Pinch wrap. Make sure it stays on top of the hook shank. Wrap that down a little ways. Secure it down. Cut the butt end of that uni stretch. And we will also go ahead and cut the gills off from the fly. Again, a bead length to a eye length, an eye length to a bead length back. And then we'll go ahead and whip finish. Cut the thread, bring the, the bead to the front of the fly. We'll start the thread again, right behind the bead. Tag. And then we're going to take our Semperfly 0.1 millimeter again, Semperfly 0.1 millimeter silver wire. Start that just behind the bead. And then we'll take our natural pheasant tail, take seven or eight fibers from there, pull it from the stem. And then we'll take and cut the tips off of that. and tie that in behind the bead. 
Then we'll take again take the wire on the pheasant tail. Oh, oh lost a fiber. It's alright. That's why I got six or seven there. We'll take and continue wrapping that down the shank. All the way to the bend of the hook. And then back up. For this one I'll go ahead and use the rotary function vise. Go ahead and do a half hitch. Put my thread on the bobbin cradle. Take some super glue and coat it along the top of the fly. Use our bodkin to even that out. That's way too much super glue. And now we'll take our pheasant tail and we'll counter wrap that. So we'll make sure it's wrapped away from us. I mean in the opposite direction of the thread. And we'll make sure touching wraps. Just continue up the shank. Like so. And then when we get to wrap that pheasant tail behind the bead, we'll take and go ahead and tie that pheasant tail down and we'll trim the butt ends. Put a couple wraps be behind it, a couple wraps in front of it, and trim that butt end. And then we're going to do this again. We're going to do another half hitch and take our wire and this time we're going to wrap the direction the thread is going. And again, probably eight, to, seven to nine wraps of wire for the ribbing and we'll tie that off and we'll helicopter the wire away from the fly and we're going to take some ice dub UV shrimp pink again just a little bit Really, we don't just a little bit. You don't need very much. And we are going to dub the thread. One, two. Pull the rest off of there because we don't need any more than that. Clean it up a little bit. Then I'm going to take my Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails, grab a dab on my bodkin, a little droplet, and we'll coat the thread. And now I'm going to apply whip finish. thread and that's now for this next version I'm going to do a blue version and I'm going to change it quite a few things up as far as um, the color goes I'm going to do like I said a blue one and we're going to use a curved shank hook it's a fire hole 315 size 12 with again the same 764 speed and we're going to start the thread behind the eye. Tag a thread. So for the gills for this version, we're going to use Unifloss. It's a little bit different material. And I'm going to take a strand of it, and I'm going to fold it over, and I'm going to cut it in half at the loop. So we got it, got it there, fold it over, and I'm going to cut it at the loop there. So I have two strands of it. From here, I'm going to put it down on the hook shank. And we're going to tie it down with a, and then wrap that back. I'll go ahead and cut the bat butt end. Oops. And then we're going to go ahead and whip finish. Cut the 
tag end. And I want to cut this the gills to length. And for these gills, I'm going to kind of twist them with my fingers to spread them out a little bit. And I'm going to cut them at about an eye length to a bead length long. Use our fingernail and fan those out. Like so. And then we'll take the bead and bring it over the top and over the wraps of thread there. And we'll start the thread again behind the bead. Cut the tag end. And we're going to take our silver wire. And for the rib, we're going to use the same rib that we've been using for the other two flies. The 0.1 millimeter Semperfly Silver to start that up. Then we'll take some blue pheasant tail fibers. Take six, six to eight strands or whatever we want to do. Pull those from the stem. And we'll cut those tips. Missed a couple. And then we'll go ahead and tie those down. Then we'll get grab the wire and the pheasant tail and begin wrapping that down the shank. Down the bend. About there looks pretty good. You can probably use a smaller hook if you wanted to to keep the profile small, or you can just go ahead and go partially part way down the bend. And from here I'm gonna go ahead and do a uh, half hitch. Put it on the bobbin cradle. And then we need some super glue. That's way more than I need. So we will use our bodkin to clean some of that off. take our pheasant tail fibers and go ahead and counter wrap them around the shank. Touching wraps. And once we get to behind the bead we'll go ahead and Right, tie those off. Our right, tie off will go in. Make sure we go in front of the fibers and in between the bead. Perhaps and trim those. Make sure I get all the fibers, butt ends, and then trim them from the fly. Bring it down, and we'll grab our wire. Actually, we're going to do another half hitch real quick. Ooh, that one didn't go in very well. Okay. And then, we'll go ahead and wrap our ribbing. Tie that ribbing off, a couple wraps behind it, and then a wrap in front of it. Go ahead and helicopter that. And then we will apply some dubbing. And for this one, I'm going to use a different color of dubbing. I'm going to go with a cinnamon. UV cinnamon iced dove. Take and wrap that around the shank. Like so and wrap that Just like so. And we want to put a little more on there. Uh, 
And then I'll take, once I get that tied in, I take some head cement. And again, with a my bodkin, I'll grab a drop off my Sally Hansen Hard as Nails brush and coat the bottom half inch, three quarter inch of thread. And then we'll whip finish. Another one for good measure. I just bumped the camera, so we'll readjust it. There we go. I'll go ahead and cut the thread. And there is a blue version of the Chronomid Frenchie. Okay, so you've watched me tie three versions of this fly. Uh, this one I'm showing right now. I'm going to show them to you again so you get an idea what they look like with your with their parts and so you know what you want to get and try. Um, this version has the muskrat gray pheasant tail for the abdomen. It has the uh, sparkler merger yarn for the gills and this is UV shrimp pink ice dub. So that's kind of how it looks. It's a little darker than the natural colored one. Um, let me pull it up. I don't know if I'll be able to see it very well but we'll try to bring it up there. There's the natural well, let's see, there we go. There's a natural colored one. Um, natural pheasant tail for the abdomen. And I put UV shrimp pink ice dub for the uh, hot spot. And this is unistretch for the gills. So now you see that there there is a difference. It's a little, the unistretch is a little softer. It's not quite as stiff as the emerger yarn. So there's that. Let me bring this over a little bit and widen it out a little bit. And then we'll bring up the third one, which is the um, blue. And we turn this out so you can see all three lined up together. Perhaps. There we go. And bring it down so you can see and wide it out. There you go. And this is one I did with blue pheasant tail. It's dyed blue. It's got uh, cinnamon hotspot UV and I used unifloss for the gills it's not quite as stiff as the emerger yarn but more stiff than the unistretch um, I don't know which one I like more uh, I'd imagine that per material the spools of the, the spools of either of these are cheaper than the emerger yarn um, but you probably get more gills out of a package of a merger yarn than you would out of the spools of these, but I could be wrong on that. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm curious to see what other colors you guys tie and what ones you've had success with. Um, I'm thinking about doing doing some of black and an orange hot, hot spot or a pink hot spot. Some of the I was out fishing last week and or excuse me, a couple days ago, and I. Uh, came across what well, my fish, the trout where I was fishing were eating and they were eating really dark chronomid patterns and really light chronomid patterns. Both of them were in there. So I'm thinking pale olive and maybe black and blue would probably be okay or purple even. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this comparison. I hope you, you can go out and find some time to tie some flies and go out and fish them. Uh, remember to Subscribe to my channel, hit the bell so you be alerted when I make changes, and have a great day. Thank you.